thank you once again for joining me glory to god this is the uh, video num video part three number three sorry a part three of video number seven in the exchange life glory to god <clears throat> thank you lord i get so many of the i sometimes forget which one is which okay but anyway i'm continuing on from the last time uh, <clears throat> where the last slide we would have looked at would have been because of our union with the law of sin in our members we were permanently morally weakened and we saw straight away that what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh now God's law is perfect and holy and righteous and true but when it came to our flesh it couldn't operate because it was weak through us even though the law in itself is powerful it's weak through us we could not perform it because the law of sin in our members that's what we have in time with the law of sin in our members is stronger even when I wanted to do good I couldn't I couldn't do it glory to God and I discovered that there was a law of sin in my members I can't go back all the way in there but we're going to go forward now glory to God so thank you Lord for your blessing and uh, acknowledge your blessing upon us Lord all of us Lord and, and your presence Lord we stand in your presence Lord and I just thank you Father for your anointing the spirit who teaches us all things goes into all truth Father God hallelujah thank you Lord okay <clears throat> Because it went on to say then that <clears throat> for when we were still without strength, Paul says in Romans 5, 6, in due time Christ died for the ungodly, okay, the people who were living ungodly lives. Why? Because they had, didn't have this moral strength, the spiritual strength to keep God's law, because God's law is spiritual and we are natural, we're, slip, we're sold under sin. Thank you, Lord. So straight away you can understand that we didn't have that strength. So we were sown, and even says in 1 Corinthians 15, that God sowed Adam in weakness, okay, in futility and weakness. And you can see straight away that <clears throat> we cannot live the Christian life. That is simply what he's saying. We cannot live the Christian, we don't have the strength or the power. The power, even the word power in the scriptures, dynamis, dynamic, you know, uh, strength, glory to God, power to do things, the power to overcome. But we have that now in Christ because we are a new creation in Christ and Christ is living in us and as us. Glory to God. And our warfare, glory to God, I must keep saying this, our warfare is against sin to overcome, we're called to be overcomers, to overcome every single sin and to go to war against Amalek, which is the flesh in the Bible. Glory to God. We are at war all the days of our lives. There's no such thing as never being a soldier. We've looked up on all of that. Just giving us a slight refreshment. We cannot lay down our arms. We're called warfare. So war is the conflict of the ages. We are the battleground. Glory to God. And thank you, Lord. And Paul says, I can do all. Philippians 4 told you, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that's what he knew. He had to be strengthened to do it over for God to operate through him. It was Christ who was in him to will and to do. And that willing in him to will was to strengthen Paul's will. Glory to God. So that Paul could be enabled to do things by his will being strengthened by the will of God. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 12, 9, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength, God says, my strength is perfect in what? In your weakness, your inability. And finally, my brethren, Ephesians 6, 10, we said, finally, my brethren, Paul said, be strong in the Lord. And that's the warfare in this talks in Ephesians 6 and putting on the whole armour of God. And be strong. How? In the Lord. You can't be strong in yourself. You haven't got it. That's what salvation is all about. Spirit, soul and body. And our warfare against sin. Overcoming sin. All of our lives. Every part of our day. Okay. Is, is alive unto God in Christ Jesus. In this warfare though. It's the fighting the good fight of faith. Holding faith and a good conscience. Which so many have thrown away. They've just thrown away. All of them, even in the mainline shows, they've thrown it all away. They've given up the whole idea that the Spirit will teach them and they've gone looking for men to teach them and they've established all things of unrighteousness. They will not come out. Glory to God. And God is calling people out in these days as overcomers. Hallelujah. Let's move on. Glory to God. So then I'm going to want to go look at Genesis chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. And I thought the Amplified Version would be better for this. And the Lord said to Cain, he says, why are you angry? Okay, now Cain, uh, the, the, Cain and his brother Abel brought offerings to the Lord, okay? 
And Abel brought the forcings of his flock, glory to God, and apparently God was pleased with that. And Cain, Cain brought something from the field. I, don't, I can't actually remember exactly what it was. But anyway, <clears throat> Cain was, the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry, Cain? You know, Cain was, the, was disappointed with himself. So obviously he didn't get the witness from God that his, his offer was accepted. And why do you look sad, he said, and depressed and dejected? And that meant he had no witness to know that his offer was accepted. Glory to God. If you do well, God says, if you do well, in other words, if you overcome and stop falling into the sin and stop falling into unbelief. If you do well, will you not be accepted? Of course you will. But that doesn't mean that God is holding. If God was holding a thought against him, he wouldn't have spoken to him at all. And he'd be off and told he wouldn't have, God would have broken the relationship. But God is still here. God is still for him, okay? Helping them to, if you do well, you might be, you must do well. You must do well. You must give it all of your heart. You cannot give God half. We saw that part. Can't be giving them half of your heart or three quarters. You must give them all of your heart. We saw that already in the things gone by we've been looking at in the last video. In the conflict of the ages, glory to God. Giving all of your heart. <clears throat> you cannot hold to one master. You can't serve two masters by holding to one and you only end up despising the other and you'll be serving none of them from the heart. None of them, either one of them. And that's what's wrong and God will not accept that. There's disapproval all over that, glory to God. God wants us to love him and to hate wickedness. That's the only ground we have. The only ground you have, the only ground I have, glory to God. Let us come to terms with that, okay? And then he says, you will not be accepted if you do well. If you do not well, he said, sin crouches at the door. That's the, actually, the door is beginning to open now because you're not, you're not giving it your all, your best. And therefore, you're leaving the door open for Satan. And sin is crouching at the door. And he said, it's desirous to have you. In other words, sin will not stop at getting a bit of you. It's going to swallow up the whole lot of you, okay? And you must master it, he said. You must master it okay must must god look for those he seeks those who <coughs> worship him and spirit and truth and that's the one for they must worship in spirit and truth god said god is spirit and they that worship him must worship that's the must okay <coughs> you must master sin glory to god that's my calling and overcome it. it's your calling as well and cain said to his brother let us go out to the field and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against Abel, okay, his brother, and killed him. And that's what happens. Sin gets into you, you're going to hate your brother. Now, hate under the New Testament is murder. If you hate your brother, you're a murderer, Jesus says. So in New Covenant, the, it's exact now in the spirit. We worship God in the spirit. Things are measured spiritually, okay. And you're putting your brother to death by hating him and not loving him. Keeping God's commandments is to love your brother. All of it is to love your brother. You're not loving your brother if you're not keeping God's commandments. That's what John says in his letter. Glory to God. So this is the spirit which is in the mainline churches who, who refuse to come out of the darkness and control of the organised religion of men. They have been circumcised by men. Okay, men establish the, their own particular churches and their own denominations and whatever it is they do. And they establish an alternative you know, plan or, you know, pattern which is opposed to what God has done. It's absolutely anti-Christian. It's opposed. And it has, all the, it has all the appearance of godliness, but it's not. They have their own head. They elect their people and they've letters after their names and they give titles and things on their doors and everything. And they've established a different kind of righteousness. This is so important. It's of the flesh. Glory to God. All of it was crucified on the cross. Thank you, Lord. This is the spirit in the mainline churches who refuse to come out of the darkness, okay? They compromise with the, with the world and with men and, and, and the control of the organised religion of men. They refuse to come out, okay? And they defend what they do, okay? They defend it in darkness, okay? They have compromised with sin and agreed terms of peace in their hearts with the world, okay? That's what they've done. They've done, you know, and they even had to get permission, glory to God, <clears throat> to have all of these kind of things in the church. They have to, especially when it comes to money <clears throat> and getting taxes off the government and getting char become a charitable organisation. They have to be get the, get the authorised by the by the, the state to do that. So that's that's compromise straight away. That's not standing in God and God being your provision. That's that's the cleverness of of 
of the human mind. That's arranging things yourself of the wisdom of men, okay? Which God has cursed. God has cursed it in the name of Jesus, okay? So where are the warriors of faith and love? And that's what faith and love, walking in faith by love, is a warfare, okay? It takes everything you have. And God gives us that strength and that power. It's not that you have to be those things. God is living in you to live that life. That's what we call the exchange life. That's who he is. You have some other Christ within you. Glory to God if they're not hearing those things. But dedicated to a life of conflict. Dedicated to a life of conflict. Glory to God. Faith fighting the good fight of faith and love holding fast to a good conscience. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ultimately, there are only two persons, okay, who will be revealed in any one of us. There's only two people that can be revealed in any one of us. Either the Christ of God, you're going to be revealed and manifested as the Son of God as his Christ to rule the nations, okay? Or the man of sin is going to be revealed in you. In other words, you fell back into the flesh and you were overcome by man. That's the only one that can be revealed in you, okay? Which will it be? Which is it going to be, okay? Let us choose this day who we will allow to live in us as us. Sin wants to live in you as you. So that you actually live in sin, okay? And Christ wants to live in you as you also, so that you can be the actual Christ in your life. Christ living in you and as you, glory to God, hallelujah. In the one life of that union we have, okay? <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. It will be, it's either one or the other. So let us choose this day who we will allow, okay, to live in us as us. God is persuading you, his will is on your will, persuading you to make the right decision, okay? The default position belongs to the man of sin. That's what the default situation is. If you don't do anything, that's what you end up in, because it's the default position. So that means if you don't exercise yourself onto godliness, you fall back into the default position of being union with your body, with the body of sin, glory to God, and faith is um, out the window, glory to God. And you're overcome. Okay, for as long as you stay in that position, you overcome and the depth of your captivity gets deeper. Oh, so the fourth position belongs to the man of sin. Through deceitfulness, you're being deceived. You can't believe that it's, you're called to a total warfare because you say, oh, no, 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 it's grace. It's by grace, you think. But grace in the Bible, look it up yourself. Look at the numbers, the strong number and look at it. It's all about discipline. <clears throat> you know, the, the, the grace of God has appeared to all men teaching us. Okay, grace has appeared, teaching us, chastising us, training us. That's what grace actually is. Chastising, training, discipline, making disciples of people. Okay, it's also the kindness and the mercy of God is all in that. But that's what he has chosen to do all of that. In kindness towards us and strength and power. To be all the things that God has called us to be. It's not left to us. He said he would do it. All we have to do is believe, only believe. So, but believing is a faith, staying in the faith. Okay, standing by faith. Okay, <clears throat> and the warfare or the warrior position belongs to the Christ of God. Warriors, hallelujah. If we cannot see this, no, even, we're already deceived. If you find a little bit of conflict or an opposition in yourself to this, you're already being deceived, okay? You think the gospel is something else. Okay, oh no, it has to be nice than that. It's not nice than that, okay? Romans chapter 7, verse 20 to 24. I'm just reading this over here, just added a few more verses to the one I've already read. Now, if I do what I will not to do, in other words, I'm being overcome, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that's overcome me is dwelling in me and overcoming my will. So I find in a law that evil is present with me, the one who has actually chosen or willed to do good. For I delight, in, I delight in the law of God myself. I see it's righteous, holy, it's good. And it's pleasing to me. I look, I want to do all them things. So I see the law of God according to the inward man. I delight in it, okay? I agree with it. But I see another law in my members, in my, in my bodily members, warring. It's a body of death, okay? Warring, it's a war. It's in militarily opposed to God's law, okay? warring military opposition against the law of my mind my mind in in understanding and seeing that god's law is good and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my mem my bodily members which are bodily members of death sin is in the body oh wretched man that i am positive who will deliver me 
<clears throat> okay, he didn't say forgive me. He didn't say who's going to forgive me. He said, who will deliver me from this body of death? Okay, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. And that's what Paul's bottom line, verse 24, Romans chapter 7. Who is going to do it? He didn't say what, what program or what, uh, what church or whatever, or, you know, or what kind of doctrine or something will deliver me. It has nothing to do with They can't. Who, he said, there's a person God has sent his son to deliver me. That's the only one, Christ, or from this body of death, okay? So then we go to John chapter 7, verse 38. <clears throat> Jesus said the following, he said, Whoever believes in me, this is at the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles in Jerusalem, whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow, some translations say belly, but out of his innermost being, is another way of looking at it, will flow rivers of living water, okay? Now it is important to remember that the life of Christ, okay, that life that God is, Christ is that life within us, it's a flow of life. Now the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, it's a, it's a law of the spirit of life, but we need to connect them to So it's important to remember that the life of Christ is a flow, like water flows, okay? <clears throat> and it's not, not an intermittent life of robotic decisions, every now, every now and oh, what will I do today, God? It's not like that. It's not that. It's coming into agreement, a continuous agreement with God, and then a continuous hearing. As you go, as you go, as you go about the things that you know are God's will, and setting your mind on things above and reading the word, God will take up the leadership. It's the flow of life, okay? And then Romans chapter 8, verse 1 to you says the following. He said, you know these very well. There is therefore no, no condemnation. God is condemning no man. God is in the business of saving, okay? <clears throat> There's another who does the condemnation. It's not Christ. It says that in Romans 8 as well. <clears throat> For those who are in Christ Jesus. He doesn't go around pointing the finger. Oh, look what you did. He doesn't, he's not He's there on the scene, Lord, does not break, does not break relationship. Your sin does not, does not cause God to break relationship with you. He's for you, okay? He wants to be, get you over those things. <clears throat> no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit, there it is, of life. The law of the spirit of life. And I put in the words flow, because we know that life is a flow as well. Jesus said that. So the law of the spirit of the flow of this life, okay? It's the flow. In Christ Jesus had made me free from the ever-present law of sin and death in my members. Okay. And that's why we look away unto the Lord. And then Hebrews chapter 12, 1 and 2 says this. Let us run with endurance, which is perseverance. Okay. The race that is set before us. There's a race be set before every man who sets his heart to overcome. To win, in other words. To win. And that race has to be won. And as you have your race, I have mine. And they're all, Christ is the author and the finisher of every one of them, okay? But the life, the life is different for me, but it's still the Christ life, okay? Because we all have a different calling. Or a different ministry, you might say. For the law of the spirit of life has made me free ever from the ever-present law of sin and death. And that's one law, the law of life overcomes the law of sin. And that's what I need is deliverance. That's the one who, he, who will deliver me. There he is. He did, the spirit of Christ delivers me. And he himself is a law. Which is exactly what I need. Forgiveness is great. My sins are forgiven. But I can fall back. I need someone to keep me. And to hold me and strengthen me. In a law of <clears throat> the spirit of a law of life. In the power of an endless life. That keeps me in the place of deliverance. Hallelujah. So let us run with endurance, persevering the race set before us, looking onto, okay, and I, looking onto, and that onto means looking away from yourself, not looking to yourself for anything, or worrying about anything, or taking any care. You're not looking, at, you're looking away, you're looking onto the Lord Jesus Christ, as away from self, and away from the world, and everything else, and you're seeking. He's a reward of them that diligently seek him, okay, Hebrews chapter 11. Faith has been sure of what we hope on, certain of what we do not see. And, <clears throat> and without faith, it's impossible to God. That anybody who would come to God must be that he is, and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And that's verse 6, Hebrews chapter 11. <clears throat> Diligent seeking, persevering. You know, 
you're not going to get heaven today. You have to be patient with God and stay in there. And that's what faith and perseverance, inheriting the promises of God, okay? <clears throat> that's what we mean, persevering, the race that is set, looking on to, away from yourself, not thinking of yourself, examining yourself, judging yourself, or measuring yourself. That's all the flesh life. Your life is chosen by God, decided by Him. He, you are His workmanship, not your own, okay? That's out of the flesh altogether. <clears throat> Seeking, and Jesus, who's the author? Because He authorized it. He chose you in the beginning. You did not choose Him, John 15, 16. That's what Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you, okay? And ordained you, <clears throat> glory to God, He ordained you to walk in faith with Him, that you would bear fruit. And that's what He means. So therefore, it's nothing to do with you. He is the life, it's life that bears, death can't bear fruit, but life in you, he is the life in you. And that's what's so important. So we authorize that he chose you, and he said, I'm going to finish it. Stay in me, remain in me, keep faith in me, keep trusting in me, persevering with me, glory to God. That's what he's saying. That's exactly what he's saying. Okay, he's finished it. He'll overcome, he's going to overcome sin. And I thank you, Father God, for that. It's a glorious, glorious truth. He's going to save every single bit of your spirit, soul, and body. Every law in the universe that has been discovered has a definition, okay? <clears throat> they are very important because we can predict things and depend upon things and have them serve us when we learn to cooperate with them. You know, <clears throat> there's some of them there I mentioned. There's electricity, there's gravity, there's thermodynamics, there's radiation, okay? All of these things, we can understand these laws and we can, because we learn about them and understand them, we can get them to serve us, you know, okay? We can have all electricity serves us very well. It was always there, but nobody knew about it until it was discovered. And that's so important. And that's the same thing. <clears throat> so evil is present in the finger physical members of every person, okay, who wills to do good, and that's the law. If you want to get a definition of the law of sin, here's what it says. The law of sin states the following. Evil is present in the physical members of every person who wills, okay, who wants or wills or chooses to do good, okay. So stop exercising yourself to do good. You do not choose to do good or look for good things to do. You don't, okay. You always look to the Lord. You're alive unto God alone. You're not alone. On, you're not alive unto good works. You're alive, or even good or evil, you're alive unto God. You're alive unto the will of God. That being the case, you keep giving yourself to God and He, the Spirit, will lead. If there's nothing to be done, He will lead you to do it. That's your life. That's your life. You don't separate from looking to heaven and then start looking at works. You don't do that. That's like you taking it onto yourself, what I do. You know, none of your business, okay? So the law of sin states that following the evil is present in the physical members of every person who wills to do good, okay? And of course, if you're willing to do evil, then, you know, evil is present anyway. That goes without saying, okay? And even in Christians, we're not talking here about, you know, the law of sin is present. It's still in your members of every single Christian because we have not been changed yet. We have not been changed. Our mortal bodies are still the same. The law of sin is present in the mortal body so therefore until we are free of our, our bodies are redeemed okay this is what your warfare actually is okay glory to god it's so important to get real about these things thank you lord getting real so christians have it as well <clears throat> anybody who ever wills whether it be natural people or christians if you're willing if you set your will to do good you're in trouble okay the fourth thing is to, to look to the lord and to discern his will let him lead you so isn't it an amazing fact, okay, that man has discovered so many laws of the universe and space and what have you, okay, and they is completely and willfully ignorant, Peter says they're willfully ignorant, of the law of sin in his own body. Isn't it an amazing thing, you know? There's laws operating in his body and he keeps denying them and telling lies about them, you know? The power that works and to keep telling lies and, you know, and, and so on and pretending to be something that he's not and deceiving one another and so on and look and pride and arrogance and, you know, false humility and all that kind of stuff. It's all the law of sin, okay? Himself first of all, self-serving, self-righteousness, all of that. He can't even identify the law of sin in his body. He thinks he's a good person with a few quirks. He's not. 
He's depraved, totally depraved sinner in God's eye, okay? Self-righteousness, complete. So what is evil? Everything that does not originate in God or with God, okay, is evil, okay? Because only God is good. Because a man came, remember the rich young ruler came to Jesus one day and he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, well, why do you call me, why do you call me? He said, good master, why do you call me good? Jesus said, there's none good but God. Okay. There you have it. Even Jesus. Jesus himself said that. He said, apart from, <coughs> apart from him, my father, I can do nothing. Okay. He doesn't have it in himself. Neither have I. So if it doesn't originate with God from heaven, originate from heaven and work its way into me and it's worked out through me, me as a vessel, as we looked at in the other mess, in all the other ones, okay, and walked out through me as a vessel, then it's Christ doing the living. He is doing the living. I no longer live. I am crucified with Christ and I no longer live, okay? <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> If Paul the Apostle had never discovered that sin was a law, okay? If he'd never discovered that sin was a law in his members of death, he would likewise never have discovered that there was a law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Because a law of sin puts him in deep need of finding a law of life, which he found. He discovered that. But if he'd never discovered that there was law of sin, you know, that he was a captive to sin in his members. He never, he never had discovered the life of Christ. That was a law, you know. Isn't that an amazing thing? Glory to God. Of course, this was a personal discovery on his own behalf, okay? Because he, he was talking, using the thing about sin, about coveting. And he couldn't stop coveting, okay? And he realised that he was a slave. Now, I won't go into that now. But of course, it was a personal discovery of power for himself. Given by Christ. It was nice of him to tell us, okay, about his own law of sin discovery in himself. But unless we also discover it for ourselves, we will remain captive to the sin in our members, okay? So you have to come face to face with this. There dwells in you no good thing. I'll say that again. There dwells in me no good thing. There dwells in you no good thing. And that's what the law of sin, that is the actually outworking, that is the result of the law of sin in our members. Christ must do the living, or else no living will be done. Glory to God. No spiritual living will be done. Glory to God. And that's all we're saying. <clears throat> so even though Paul discovered it for himself, and he told us about it, uh, that's great, uh, nice to hear about it, Paul, but you may not have discovered it for yourself. It might just be something that you heard of, but you haven't, you haven't discovered it yet. You still think there's a bit of good stuff going on in there. You have yet to discover the law of sin has taken you. You're a slave to sin. Okay, and unless you become a slave to Christ, you will still be a slave of sin. There's no such thing as holding to one and, 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 you know, and despising the other. That's not the life of Christ. Life because it's love and hate, so therefore you are still a captive to sin if you haven't discovered it. And may God save you in the name of Jesus, okay? <clears throat> John 15, 5, for without me, he says, you can do nothing. And Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, Paul says, again, as we mentioned, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, okay? That's the only way anything can be done for God. And it's God doing it. And then Romans 9, 16, for then, <clears throat> so then, the conclusion Paul came to in this verse, you can read the rest of the verse if you like. So then, it is not of him who wills, for a man to will this or will that, or make the same. It's not of any man to do that, okay? He can do it if you want, but it's not God's will. Nor of him who runs. And that race we were talking about, it's not going to be of you, you deciding to be your very best. It's not that. It's of you falling back on the mercy of God. But it said, it's of God who shows mercy. It's not of him who has the strongest will. It's not that. It's Christ's will. The will of God is the power. Okay. And he shows mercy by strengthening us. Okay. To those who have faith. So how many <clears throat> is God willing to show his mercy upon? Is he going to show it at all? Well, ultimately, of course, he will. Because I believe all men will be saved. The scripture is very clear on that. I'm not talking about that now. 
So how many is he willing to show mercy upon? And then Romans chapter 11, verse 32, the Bible says that for God has committed, okay, committed them all. All men have been committed into disobedience. In other words, they were sown in weakness. The church doesn't know this yet, by the way, glory to God. They still think that Adam was perfect and in the first Adam and he fell and now we're all going to hell. <clears throat> they all made that all, all completely missed the, missed the bus on that one, you know. For God has committed them all, he says, to disobedience. Why? Why would God do such a terrible thing of committing all men into disobedience? Okay? And then send them to hell. Nonsense. He didn't do it to send them to hell. He committed them all to disobedience. And this is what it says. That he might have mercy upon all. And there's no might about it. That's just the way scripture puts things. So that he would be in the place then. All men are disobedient. Now God is in the place of showing mercy to all. If some of them were, were <clears throat> you know, never committed sin, there wouldn't be a question of mercy. Okay? But God being God had to help people to see there's only one God. And God has mercy upon all in that way. And that's the whole basis of God creating a man. Okay? The process is still going on. But he has his perfect man now in Christ now. And he's sowing that seed into humanity. Glory to God. Okay. <clears throat> and that's the last part I just want to show. There will be more. Glory to God. I'll be saying some more things about this. So join me again next time. And thank you very much for joining me. And may the Lord bless you as you listen to this. And store up, store you up unto faith and love and good works. Okay. Glory to God. And that you <clears throat> be manifested as a son of God, as an overcomer, and escape the second death, which is the lake of fire. Hallelujah. God bless you and keep you. Thank you, Lord.